As someone who's managed to get shredded and stay shredded year round, I'm going to share with you the blueprint that's going to get you shredded with sustainable results in less than 50 days. And I achieved it without doing any crash dieting, actually eating more food and a lot of carbs, and barely doing any cardio. To be honest, getting shredded and staying shredded is pretty simple if you know the basics of fat loss and follow the three essential steps that I'm going to show you in this video. But if you've ever followed any of these fad diets, then you probably know that the results don't last in most cases. And over 80% of the people who try to get shredded end up failing and regaining the weight back. Most people don't actually realize that getting shredded for a specific amount of time, like for a fitness competition or a photo shoot or a wedding, is a different goal that uses different methods to achieve rather than getting shredded and staying lean in the long term. Before I break down these methods, just to get everyone in sync, we're going to do a quick fat loss 101 so that we can actually understand how fat loss really works. Fat loss happens when you're in a caloric deficit. This means you're consuming fewer calories than you're burning throughout the day. You consume calories by eating food, but you burn calories in four different ways. First is the calories your body burns naturally, when you're just sitting there, not really doing anything. But it's working to keep your heart beating and stuff like that. That's your resting energy expenditure. Then there's your exercise activity thermogenesis, which is the number of calories you burn from exercising. This leads on to your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT. And this is any activity you do that isn't exercise. So stuff like fidgeting, getting up, sitting down, typing, tapping your fingers. Then there's the thermic effect of food, which is the small number of calories your body burns to digest the foods that you eat. So let's say we add all that up and it comes out to 2000 calories that we burned in one day. If we add up everything you ate that day and it came out to 2,500 calories, that means you're in a 500 calorie surplus for the day. But if instead of 2,500 calories, you only ate 1,900 calories, now that would mean you're in a 100 calorie deficit for the day. Okay, so that's pretty simple, but there's a really important part that most people miss because when you lose weight, the number of calories that you burn each day is also going to decrease. This is called metabolic adaptation and it's your body's way of sort of compensating for the weight you're losing. This means that as you lose weight you won't burn as many calories through your resting energy expenditure because your body's getting smaller. You also won't burn as many calories doing the same amount of exercise as your body becomes more efficient with the way that it uses energy. You won't burn as many calories through NEAT because your body will naturally become less fidgety and you won't burn as many calories through the thermic effect of food because you're not eating as much food as you were. So it's important to remember that the 100 calorie deficit that you started with will probably become a smaller deficit after a few weeks or months of dieting. Because when you decrease the number of calories that you're eating, you're also indirectly decreasing the number of calories that you're burning. These adaptations can happen at different rates for different people and can even happen within days. So to take metabolic adaptation into account, you might need to lower your calories a bit more over time to keep up with the rate of weight loss that you're aiming for. Or you can just accept that your weight loss is probably going to take a little bit longer than you first expected. Okay, so for any fat loss diet to work, it has to have these three essential components. Number one, a continuous calorie deficit, using your diet and exercise to cause fat loss. Number two, resistance training, so we maintain or even increase muscle mass. And number three is eating enough protein. Protein is really important, but often overlooked when people are completely focused on losing fat. Your body needs protein in order to hang on to the amount of muscle you have throughout your whole dieting phase. Because since muscle tissue, which is built using proteins, is more metabolically active than fat tissue, your body's going to want to get rid of it first, especially if it doesn't have the supplies it needs to sustain that muscle. Usually aiming for about 1 to 1.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight each day is a good target to shoot for. And most other things like the kinds of foods you focus on, the number of meals you have each day, and the time that you eat those meals all comes down to personal preference. Okay, so that's the basics on how to get shredded. But usually once people know those, they just run to short term methods to try and get that fat off as fast as possible. But your goal is to get lean and stay lean. So going for the short term approaches, no matter how tempting they might look, is a big mistake. Yes, all the most popular fad diets often cause rapid weight loss, which is why they become so popular in the first place. But low calorie crash dieting usually results in more muscle loss. And a lot of people find that over time, they usually just regain the weight that they lost. 
And yes, cutting out an entire food group might help you avoid eating too many calories in the short term, but it can eventually lead to nutrient deficiencies and uncontrollable cravings that pretty much guarantee that you're going to gain the weight back. And you can avoid going out to eat at restaurants or skip social events as much as you want to try and avoid the foods that you find most tempting. But you need to consider the people that you would have been spending that time with. Because over time, your relationships could start to suffer and it's really going to make your diet feel unsustainable. So if you don't just want to get shredded, but you want to stay lean after your diet, there's three specific methods that you should use that won't just help you lose the fat in a sustainable way, but will also get you sustainable results so you can keep the fat off in the long run. The third one is definitely one that most people forget about and is probably the most important. Method one to ensure you get long-term results is to diet more slowly, so it hardly feels like you're in a dieting phase at all. In general, using science-based cutting principles, you want to aim to lose about 0.5 to 1% of your body weight each week. So if you currently weigh 150 pounds, then you should be aiming to lose around 0.75 to 1 pound per week. So if your goal is to lose about 10 pounds in total, then it's going to take you around 7 to 13 weeks to get there. This is also what I would recommend, but you might benefit from taking your fat loss phase a little bit slower, as this will give you more flexibility in terms of your meals, and will likely give you the best possible chance of maintaining or even gaining muscle mass throughout your dieting phase. The biggest advantage of taking your time during a cut is that you can do it in such a way that it barely even feels like you're on a diet. You can create a slightly smaller calorie deficit simply by swapping certain foods, like butter to lighter spreads, or whole milk to skimmed or plant-based milk, and cooking oil to lower calorie options. There are honestly so many low calorie options at just your average supermarket nowadays, so you really have no excuses. You can still enjoy going out to eat with friends, and the relaxed mindset that you'll develop when it comes to your diet will make it so much easier to maintain your goal weight after your cut a lot more easily than the crash diet approach. And I think it'd be worth that little bit of extra time it takes you to get there. To make sure you're consistently losing that goal each week, try aiming for a calorie deficit of around 20% less than the calories you would need to maintain your current weight. To do this, you just need to figure out what 20% of your maintenance calories is and subtract that number to get your cutting calories. If you don't know what your maintenance calories are, I'll pop two methods you can use to work it out on the screen now. However, a lot of people have found success when they use a slightly higher calorie deficit, so they're losing about two pounds per week. This would mean that it takes you around 35 days to lose that 10 pounds. I would recommend sticking to a loss of about 1.5 pounds per week, and this would get you to your goal in just under 50 days. But if you find tracking your calories all a bit overwhelming, then you can focus on tracking your body weight instead, and just make the common sense lower calorie food choices at least most of the time. For some people, this method can be enough to get them going on their fat loss phase, but for others, you can even just estimate your calories while focusing on getting in enough protein, just to take a little bit of the stress out of tracking and not focus too much on the numbers of carbs and fats. So if you're eating something that's a bit harder to find the exact macros for, or you've gone out to eat at a restaurant, you can just estimate the number of calories, or find a similar meal option if you're using a tracking app. This can save you a lot of time and make the whole tracking process a lot less intimidating. As well as giving yourself enough time to get shredded, you also need to make sure that your end goal is actually realistic. Because no matter how slowly you take your diet, you really can't expect to be able to maintain 7% body fat over the whole year. Because when you reach a certain point, your energy, your sleep quality, your hormones and your mood are gonna fall off a cliff and all you'll ever be able to think about is food, which can massively take away from all the other things that are super important in your life. So even if you could get completely stage lean shredded, the mental and physical state you'll be in at that level really isn't a state worth maintaining to that extent. In general, the realistically maintainable body fat range for women is between 18 to 28%, which looks a bit like this. And for men, it's more like 10 to 20% body fat. I will add though, that your starting point might influence where you end up on this scale, as someone who's been living at a higher body fat percentage of around 40% for the last 10 years might find it harder to maintain 28% body fat than someone who's naturally leaner would find to maintain 18% body fat. But when it comes down to it, you need to be realistic with yourself and decide on an end goal that is going to be sustainable for you and your body rather than expecting to be able to maintain the same level 
level of leanness as someone else. So the main point is, if you're trying to sustain a physique that is below your set genetic range of body fat, then it's going to be pretty hard to maintain even if you're doing absolutely everything else right. The second long-term method is to use habits to make dieting feel naturally easy, even on those days where you have literally zero motivation. Because no matter how motivated you feel watching this video right now, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. At some point, that motivation is going to slip. So when that happens, if you haven't built up effective habits, then things are going to go downhill pretty quickly. But if you've got those habits in place, then it's going to be a breeze when you lose motivation and you're not going to have to stress about getting off track. So I've got a couple of science-based strategies that you can use to make your life a whole lot easier, especially when you're deep into your dieting phase at the point where most people give up. The first habit building technique is one that I read about in this book by James Clear called Atomic Habits and it's all about the principle of habit stacking. This is where you pair an activity that's going to support your goal of getting shredded with a habit that already comes naturally to you and that you do on a regular basis. So for example, I've got a few podcasts that I'm listening to at the moment that I really enjoy. And I know that in order to reach my physique goals, it's a helpful habit to meal prep every weekend, even if sometimes I find it boring. So what I do is I save my favourite podcast to listen to while I'm meal prepping because this makes the whole experience so much more enjoyable and I'll never forget to meal prep because I'm always excited to listen to my favourite podcast. Another example is I really enjoy watching YouTube videos but I'm not a massive fan of cardio so I'm often tempted to skip it. But if I pair the enjoyable activity of watching YouTube videos with doing cardio then you can bet anything I will not be skipping. The second habit building technique is to switch up your space to suit your goals. So if you find it hard to get out of bed to hit the gym in the morning, but you know is the only time you can go, try putting your phone with your alarm on the other side of the room, so you have to get up in the morning to turn it off. Or if you really struggle to get off your phone in the morning, you can try putting it in a different room entirely and using an alarm on your watch or an alarm clock to help you get up and on with the day faster. If there's a certain trigger food that you find it especially easy to overeat, for me, it's definitely peanut butter. You might want to leave it at the shop next time you're doing your weekly food shop. You'll be able to add this food back in in small amounts after a while, but to help get over the initial cravings, it can be really useful not to have it in the house for the first month or so to relieve the mental stress of having to resist that temptation. And if you tend to find yourself regularly stressed or bored of eating at night, Try brushing your teeth or chewing some gum and having some alternative activities around like video games, books or puzzles that you can use as stress relief instead. So if you follow all or most of what I've gone through so far, I guarantee you're going to get shredded and reach your goal. But we're not quite done yet because after you've reached your goal, we need to put a plan in place for how we're actually going to maintain that physique. So our third strategy is to have a solid post-diet plan. This is the part that almost everyone forgets about and there's two really common mistakes that I see most often when people reach the end of their cut. The first and most common mistake that people make is just not having any post-diet plan at all. So as the initial excitement of reaching their goal and the motivation that comes along with that starts to decrease, they slowly start to go back to their old habits around food and get more relaxed with their workouts until eventually they're back to where they started. But thankfully, this problem is really easy to solve because all you need is a post-diet plan and I'll come back to that in a second. The next common mistake usually happens in the people who like taking the science-based approaches to dieting as they end up trying to specifically craft every tiny detail of a reverse dieting phase. And in some cases, this mistake can be just as bad as the first one. Because if you're drawing out your dieting phase when it's really not needed, you're going to be more hungry for longer than necessary, which can lead to more mental strain and eventually you're just going to fall off. To keep it simple, reverse dieting is where you slowly increase your calories from the point you've finished at in your deficit back up to your maintenance number of calories over a few weeks or months. Reverse dieting is used a lot and it's especially relevant in bodybuilding as a lot of bodybuilding competitors are really depleted after a hard dieting phase to get stage lean so are much more susceptible to fat storage when a higher number of calories are reintroduced. But for most people I would say it's probably not necessary and it makes sense to try and get back to maintenance as soon as possible at the end of your cut. Because if your goal isn't to lose any more weight, then there's no point in being in a calorie deficit anymore. 
only thing is, finding your new maintenance calories is probably going to take a little bit of trial and error, as they're most likely not going to be the same as they originally were when you started your cut. Due to your body having made adaptations to use energy more efficiently while you were dieting. In most cases, your new maintenance should be around 200 to 600 calories above what you're eating at the end of your cut. So if you're eating 1,800 calories on the last day of your diet, the next day you should increase your calories up to 2,000 to 2,400 calories, aiming for closer to 2,400 if you weren't crash dieting. After that, you want to take a more gradual approach to increasing your calories, with the main aim of getting them as high as possible while still maintaining your body weight on average. So if you've just finished your cut and you've upped your calories to a new maintenance intake of 2,400 calories, that's a great place to start, but it doesn't mean that 2,400 calories is going to be your new fixed maintenance number. Instead, it's helpful to think of your maintenance as more of a range, meaning in reality you might be able to maintain your weight by eating anything from 2400 even up to 2800 calories. Over time, you should try to increase your daily calorie intake towards the top of that maintenance range. You don't have to take months over this process, just make sure to look for any trends in your weight over the weeks. And if you're managing to maintain a fairly constant weight on average, then you can think about adding in a few more calories. This is going to be an effective plan to help you sustain your fat loss results, not because it's going to magically transform your metabolism or anything, but because if you can eat more food while maintaining your current weight, you won't feel as restricted, which will make things a lot easier to sustain in the long run. On top of that, having more food means more fuel for your workouts, so you're going to have more energy to push hard in the gym. But this definitely doesn't mean you have to go tracking your weight every day of your maintenance phase. Just weighing yourself once a week or even every few weeks is more than enough to help you spot any trends in weight loss or gain, as your weight will fluctuate naturally on a daily or monthly basis, especially for women. If you're someone who would describe yourself as sort of skinny fat though, then there is the risk of just looking skinny once you've dieted down. So to avoid this, I would recommend going for a body recomposition approach, which you can check out in this video next. See you there.